students in the last video the fourth unit mathematics 2 the lecture 1 we discussed already about the basic definitions of beta and gamma functions properties of beta function proofs and uh, some basic problems related to the beta function so in this second lecture of the fourth unit special functions beta and gamma we will see some properties of the gamma function and uh, proofs of the properties of the gamma function and problems on gamma and the relation between beta and gamma functions once again we will revise what is beta function we already discussed in the last video but once again we will revise what is a beta function beta function is defined as beta of m comma n is equal to integral 0 to 1 x power m minus 1 1 minus x power n minus 1 dx where m comma n greater than 0 gamma function the defined definite integral integral 0 to infinity e power minus x into x power n minus 1 dx is called gamma function it is denoted by gamma of n hence gamma of n is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus x into x power n minus 1 dx where n greater than 0 so these are the basic two definitions of beta and gamma functions so what is beta function we know that what is the beta and what is the gamma so beta of m comma n is equal to 0 to 1 x power m minus 1 1 minus x power n minus 1 dx similarly gamma of n is equal to integral 0 to infinity 0 to e power minus x x power n minus 1 dx if it is beta the limits are 0 to 1 if it is gamma the limits are 0 to infinity the students have have to remember this one okay it's the most important don't confuse beta function 0 to 1 x power m minus 1 1 minus x power n minus 1 dx and gamma function 0 to infinity e power minus x into x power n minus 1 dx clear now we already discussed in the last lecture about the properties of beta proofs and problems similarly here you will discuss about the properties of the gamma function proofs and the relation between the beta gamma and related problems okay now the first property is gamma of 1 is equal to 1 so we have to prove this property in a simplest manner by using the definition of the gamma function you know that gamma of n is equal to 0 to infinity e power minus x into x power n minus 1 dx so put n is equal to 1 because our aim is we have to prove gamma of 1 is equal to 1 so therefore in the place of n simply take 1 gamma of 1 is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus x into x power n minus 1 n is equal to 1 so therefore put n is equal to 1 1 minus 1 0 dx e power x power 0 means 1 so therefore integral 0 to infinity e power minus x dx now integral of e power minus x is minus e power minus x 0 to infinity so whenever we take the upper limit this is e power minus infinity that is nothing but 1 by e power infinity that is 1 by infinity because e power infinity is equal to infinity only so therefore 1 by infinity is 0 and this is e power 0 is 1 so therefore 0 minus 1 if you have anyway minus outside so minus of minus will be plus 1 hence gamma of 1 is equal to 1 it's a very simplest manner you can able to prove these basic proof properties by using the basic definition of the gamma function clear now one more function that is the one more property gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 into gamma of n minus 1 where n greater than 1 so from this we can prove one more property if you take this n minus 1 into the right side gamma of n minus 1 is equal to gamma of n by n minus 1 so this will give one more property okay and gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n factorial okay and gamma of 1 by 2 is equal to root pi so this we will prove now what is gamma of 1 by 2 is equal to root pi so this is the repeated problem in the university, small university exams for 5 marks as a question gamma of 1 by 2 is equal to root pi prove that okay now we will see what is this one show that gamma of 1 by 2 is equal to root pi now again by the definition of the gamma function we know that gamma of n is equal to 0 to infinity e power minus t t power n minus 1 dt it is either x or t what is the variable we can take similarly put n is equal to 1 by 2 gamma of 1 by 2 is equal to 0 to infinity e power minus t t power 1 by 2 minus 1 into dt so this is minus 1 by 2 okay so now i am taking the substitution t is equal to x square taking the differentiation on both sides dt is equal to 2x dx 
the limits are when t is equal to 0 x will become 0 t is equal to infinity x will become infinity so therefore the limits for t 0 to infinity similarly the limits for x is equal to also 0 to infinity now the integration with respect to t will become with respect to x like this so put t is equal to x square e power minus x square x square whole power minus 1 by 2 dt is equal to 2x dx here okay this is x power minus 1 into x will become 0 that is x power 1 okay that is x only 2 take separate from the integration so 2 into integral 0 to infinity e power minus x square into dx okay so this is gamma of 1 by 2 is equal to sorry this is gamma of 1 by 2 is equal to okay now this is gamma of 1 by 2 is equal to we can able to prove like this similarly we can write one more gamma 1 by 2 again same with respect to y so 2 into 0 to infinity e power minus y square dy gamma 1 by 2 in terms of x again gamma 1 by 2 in terms of y 2 into 0 to infinity e power minus y square into dy okay now by multiplying these two gamma 1 by 2 into gamma 1 by 2 so this for integral value this integral that is we have to multiply both so 2 into integral 0 to infinity e power minus x square dx 2 into integral 0 to infinity e power minus y square dy if you multiply so this is gamma 1 by 2 into gamma 1 by 2 will become gamma 1 by 2 whole square here and this 2 into 2 this 2 into 2 is equal to 4 so that is double integral 0 to infinity and integral 0 to infinity e power minus x square and uh, e power minus y square here put together e power minus of we take the minus common e power minus of x square plus y square dx dy let us take this is equation 1 clear so we have to take consider that is equation 1 now now see so for simplifying this integral i am changing the integral form from the cartesian form to the polar form okay cartesian form to the polar form by taking the substitution x is equal to r cos theta y is equal to r sin theta polar forms x is equal to r cos theta y is equal to r sin theta then we will have dx dy is equal to r into dr into d theta now from the equation 1 we can able to write here the limits are also theta is equal to 0 to pi by 2 and r is equal to 0 to infinity okay so now from the above integral equation 1 gamma 1 by 2 whole square is equal to 4 into theta is equal to 0 to infinity r is equal to 0 to infinity in the place of x square plus y square that is r square cos square theta r square sin square theta if you take r square common cos square theta plus sin square theta is equal to 1 so therefore this is simply e power minus r square dx dy we have dx dy is equal to r into dr into d theta okay so therefore the y of integral 1 will become like this after changing the cartesian form to the polar form Okay. Next, so gamma of 1 by 2 whole square is equal to 2 into integral 0 to pi by 2 r is equal to 0 to infinity e power minus r square 2r into dr into d theta. Okay. Now, let r square is equal to p. r square is equal to p. Okay. So, 2 into uh, for the first integral it is integral 0 to in, uh, pi by 2 that is d theta to separate the integrals which is d theta and r is equal to 0 to infinity e power minus r square into r into dr ok so that is the second integral for the first integral integral 0 to pi by 2 d theta that is theta limits are 0 to pi by 2 and in the second integral put r square is equal to p 2r take the differentiation on both sides 2r dr is equal to dp the limits are r is equal to 0 to uh, infinity p will become 0 to infinity so therefore integral 0 to infinity in the place of r square we have to substitute p e power minus p and 2r dr is equal to dp only so 2r dr is equal to dp so e power minus p integration is minus e power minus p 0 to infinity so similarly this will have so that is pi into that is uh, 0 plus 1 okay so that is the pi only so gamma of 1 by 2 is equal to pi and this is gamma 1 by 2 whole square is equal to pi so therefore taking square root on both sides gamma 1 by 2 is equal to root pi so this is we have to prove so this is the very important question for the university exam for 5 marks prove that gamma 1 by 2 is equal to root pi and sometimes they are also asking evaluate gamma 1 by 2 okay either they are asking in two ways show that gamma 1 by 2 is equal to root pi or evaluate gamma 1 by 2 okay anyway we can able to prove that by basic definition of the gamma function 
Now we'll see one more very important essay question. What is the relation between the beta and gamma function? The relation between beta and gamma is given by beta of m comma n is equal to 